Well, welcome, everyone, and thank you uh, very much, uh, Madam Chair. Um, paying one's fair share is an important obligation in what's known as the American social contract. With an estimated 1.6 or 168 individual taxpayers and billions who filed returns this year alone, processing high returns of volume and high returns of uh, paper requires sufficient personnel, modernized technology, and streamlined systems. A little over a year ago, President Biden signed the Induction Inflation Reduction Act, or the IRA, into law. Uh, as most of you know, this groundbreaking legislation reached the IRS at a critical time, right before the 2023 tax filing season. And it delivered $80 billion to the IRS over the next 10 years. The funds allowed the IRS to hire new staff, to modernize all of its technology, and to audit wealthy tax cheats who had been getting away with murder. The poster board behind me illustrates that this is a win, a win for low and middle class Americans. These IRA-backed improvements achieved, as you can see, achieved 87 percent peak levels of performance and service success as a result of their implementation, 87 percent higher than in any other time. It was a dramatic increase from the previous tax filing year alone. IRS answered 6.5 million more calls than last year, cutting the wait times down by 86 percent, which I think is phenomenal. It served more than 140,000 additional taxpayers and cleared the backlog of unprocessed 2022 individual tax returns with no errors. Now, you got to be doing something right to have those kind of numbers that are certifiable and verifiable. So these are real and tangible and immediate results that show that investment in the IRS improves taxpayer services. Don't take my word for it. The IRS pointed out in a sweeping release that, by the way, I would ask unanimous consent be entered into the record showing that the agency will continue to prioritize efforts of high-income individuals and companies uh, without running away, turning a blind eye, or refusing to do what they should, in fact, do. So these are real. As I said before, they are tangible. They are immediate results that show that investment in the IRS improves taxpayer services. Unfortunately, after this year's tax filing season, in the budget negotiations, the nation was forced to heed the Republicans' persistent call for rescinding the IRS funding. There were a lot of boogeyman stories that took place all over the floor of the Congress about what was going to happen to almost virtually scare the American taxpayer into believing something that was not true. The reality is the agency kept its promise, its commitment to the nation, and its stated goal of cracking down on delinquent tax evading millionaires who had been getting away, as I said before, with robbery. The agency kept its commitment. And so despite cuts to its funding and the persistent and dangerous mischaracterizations of IRS agents as sort of an army of boogeyman waiting to kick in your door and lock you up, We've got to stop playing games like that, and we've got to make sure that middle-class Americans know what the facts are, what the intentions were, and more importantly, what the goals have been and the conclusions that bear those goals out have been. To the extent that IRS has collected nearly $160 million in back taxes from individuals earning over a million dollars speaks volumes about who they are trying to help and who are they trying to keep us from being taken advantage by. These millions of dollars in missing tax payments were not an accident. It was not manna from heaven. It was a clear, deliberate effort to make sure that enforcement 
was the way it should be by that agency and to make sure that tax cheats, particularly the wealthy, wealthy, wealthy ones, did not have a safe haven. For example, the IRS identified one individual who just last month was ordered to pay $15 million in restitution for falsifying personal expenses as deductible business expenses. Now, I don't know what kind of neighborhood that person lives in, but when you can get that kind of fine, it suggests that you've been getting away with them one serious crime and was caught. These efforts to fraud or defraud the federal government included financing of a 51,000 square foot mansion. I'm glad whoever the hell it was got caught. I really am. That's the affront and that's the tragedy here. And that's why we've got to find a way to make the IRS protects middle income people by going after the high income abusers. These sorts of greedy tax cheats exacerbate the $688 billion tax gap, highlighting the stark contrast between the amount of money owed and the amount of collected by the IRS on time. In other words, the more millionaires and billionaires who skirt around and play around with paying their fair share, the larger the burden that falls on hardworking everyday Americans who pay their fair share every year on time. The IRS reports that even small declines in taxpayer compliance can cause the nation billions of dollars in lost revenue, underscoring the need for simplicity and efficiency during the tax filing season. And that's why I co-led with my colleague here, Ms. Porter, and with Mr. Connolly of Virginia, the Trust in Government Act, which directs the Department of Treasury to expand electronic tax filing and other customer support via email. We also led the Streamlining IRS Operations Act, which requires that tax returns filed on paper can be readily digitized. The IRS heeded that ask and that request by expanding, not reducing, by expanding its digital scanning efforts this tax season. So Congress must continue to ensure that the IRS has the funding and the resources necessary to maintain its remarkable progress since IRA became law. Progress that is unheralded in many respects and unnoticed by others who hide behind these fake characterizations. Make no mistake, further cuts will hamper the IRS's ability to execute transformative change. And so I urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to preserve IRS funding as we move forward from our current stalemate and get back to the business of funding the government's operations. I want to thank our witnesses, Commissioner Werfel and Director Lucas Judy for your participation in today's hearing. And I'm particularly looking forward to hearing from Commissioner Werfel about the status of the IRS's upcoming tax filing program known as Direct File. We have the duty and the obligation in this committee to ensure that the government operates at a top tier level for all Americans. And I look forward to discussing as members of Congress how we can work to support those efforts. I yield back, Madam Chair.